Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is we bring about coaching, uh, mental health, emotional health related topics on a regular basis and we try to do that on a daily basis. We've got over 500 audios available for your listening pleasure, hopefully several things that you enjoy. And today we're going to talk about things that hold your confidence back, things that keep you at a low confidence level. If you are trying to improve your communication skills, confidence level uh, for dating or personal relationships or just in daily life itself, I'd love to be of assistance to you. Uh, we can we can set up a conversation, maybe work together, make 2021 your best year yet. We're still early enough in the year that we can make some history, right? Anyway, there's two ways to get contact. You can send a message through my um my website, which is available in the About Me section of this YouTube page, or you can go on Twitter at PO Perception, reach out there. In any event, we're going to run through about eight or nine things that can kill your confidence. Just address those. So the first thing is caring what other people think. Look, there are going to be people that judge you. There are going to be people that get you. There are going to be people that hate you. There are going to be people that don't even know you exist. And so the more you accept that there are different levels of people, in your life and at your level of influence a person can only influence you as much as you allow them to so if you're going to allow criticism to affect you at all let it be constructive criticism so that you walk away ahead not not uh, negative uh, criticism so that you walk away behind on the on, at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you, what other people think of you because critics and supporters can't do whatever it is you need to do to get yourself to the next level. You're the one that has to do the work. Having support is wonderful, but if you lean on it too much, you won't sustain yourself. Having critics can be horrible, but they only have influence if you allow it. So letting go of that is necessary. The next is um, ultimately kind of looking at negative thought patterns and not addressing them. If you always think you're fat, if you always think you're lazy, if you always think you're not smart enough, not pretty enough, whatever it is, you become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I'll, I'll jump ahead and put this in with self-defeat. When you defeat yourself mentally, there's no point to even continuing. Now, it's not to say that it can't be difficult to make mental changes. It can. And getting disciplined about looking at yourself differently is one of the best investments you can make in yourself. But if you're not willing to see yourself differently, I can guarantee you nothing will ever change because change is, is responded to when we get a completely new and different and more meaningful uh, um, kind of out outlook and or set of habits, series of habits. Um, the next one is social media dependency. Honestly, I think if we killed social media completely, if it didn't exist, society would be in better position. A lot of people like it. They, it's how they stay connected. It's how they build communities. But the message board community where longer forms were necessary is much better than the instant gratification of social media because – if you're competing with what, what people on social media are doing, what they own, what they have, how, how many friends they appear to have, how connected they are, how many influencers they have under their thumb or, or what they're looking at, honestly, then you're wasting energy, you're wasting time, and you're going to kill your own confidence. There's always going to be someone that looks better than you on social media. There's also people, if you want to search for them, that will make you feel better about yourself because you look better than them. But... At the end of the day, it's all illusion. It's all manipulation. It's all image. It's not reality. And so, the more time you spend there, uh, the the more the more damaged you may become. The next is setting low goals for yourself. So, look, finding finding reasonable goals is one of the most important things about goal setting at all, anyway. Because when you um, you know, kind of don't have reasonable goals when you don't have a tie to goals that are that are manageable that 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 you can achieve. You're gonna ultimately either underachieve and and get nothing done at the end of the day, right? If my goal is I'm just gonna get out of bed today, well, that's pretty easy. I either do or I don't. But if my goal is I'm gonna climb a mountain backwards while swimming underwater, 
then I'm probably going to fail. So setting reasonable goals that require con- commitment to progress is where you need to be. But if you set low goals, your confidence won't rise because you'll hit them and feel unfulfilled. Part of a goal working for you is it's a challenge and you and you rose to the challenge. That's part of why goals can work for people. The next is blame. At the end of the day, there's a million reasons why things happen, and yes, other people can influence our outcomes. However, how we react to other people is ultimately just as important as what they do or what they say or how they behave. And our reactions oftentimes are undervalued or understated or we or we choose to blame other people when we don't want to take responsibility for the things we didn't do. And so blame is one of those dangerous things where, yes, it makes you feel better in the moment. You can rationalize why something didn't go your way, why something didn't happen. You have excuses for the moments why nothing changes. But is blaming someone else going to change your circumstance? No. And at the end of the day, it can become a habit that makes you feel less confident and competent because, you know, you get to a place within yourself where you don't really know what's coming next, where you don't know how to be responsible and take responsibility and not bite off more than you can chew so that you don't fail again in the future, fall short again in the future. The next um, thing is staying silent in social situations. Now, there's a value to... Uh, kind of surveying a room and people watching can be an awesome experience just so you can gain confidence so you can gain perspective so you can understand the lay of a room especially if you're an ambivert who leans introverted or a, a, a complete introvert if you have social phobia or challenges in in how you relate with others being silent can be helpful however You have to see, if you want to be more socially connected, better socially connected, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And you have to see your opinions, your viewpoints, your uh, take on things as valuable and equal to those in a group. If you don't see yourself as worthy of having something to to say and you stay silent, you're either going to be seen as underintelligent, you're going to be seen as aloof, In other words, there's no way that staying silent over an extended period of time is going to serve you well. The next is you don't take compliments. What I mean by that is, look, lots of people use compliments as manipulation, and it's entirely true that people can manipulate our emotional state based on giving us compliments. But it is also, you can come at compliments from a neutral position, which is, hey, maybe they meant it, maybe they don't. I'm going to assume they do. Sure, why not? Because it makes me feel good that they see something in me that I might have taken for granted. And so it's it's valuable when we begin to look at, you know, seeing ourselves in that way. The last one is rumination on the past. The past is something you cannot change. The future is something you co-create. There's absolutely no value in, in to staying anywhere other than in the moment unless it's for periods of temporary reflection. The past will not change no matter how many times you think about it, look at it, talk about it, or do anything with it. So getting to a place where your past is a part of your story from a historical perspective but not a part of your daily influences is the place that it is best for you to get to if you're trying to really own your life. So hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you to to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.